What's going on everybody? I'm Average Joe and welcome to another Average video. Alrighty, in today's Average video, we are gonna be adding another five kilowatt hour worth of battery storage to the 10 kilowatt hour battery bank that we have here right now. Basically what this example is, is if you bought a 10 kilowatt hour battery or even a 20 or a 30, and you find out later on that that's just not quite enough for your needs, you can easily stack or add more Ethos batteries to your current system, okay? So I have two batteries here right now, so that is 10 kilowatt hour, and we're gonna be adding a third for a total of 15 kilowatt hour. So in order for us to do that, we're gonna have to remove the controller box right up here so we can stack the next battery on top of that and then mount the controller box up a little bit higher. All right, so that's basically what we're gonna be doing today. All right, so the first thing that we need to do before we start is shut everything down. So what I'm gonna do real quick first is go back to my main electrical panel back there, shut off the circuit breaker that feeds the inverter, and then we can shut everything else down right over here. So give me one sec and I'll do that. All right, so over here on the inverter, we can see we have a notice up here and that's basically because I disconnected the grid power from the inverter. You can even go into the alarm and see that trip by no AC. All right, so no AC is being supplied to the inverter. Next thing we can do is shut off the AC output underneath this door right here. So we'll open up the three latches on the side right over here. And then our load breaker right here, we can go ahead and shut that off. Boom. And of course we also have to disconnect the solar that's right over here. And that one is easy. We just turn that to off. And now we can turn off the battery breaker right here. And that should shut off any second. There we go. All right, so we can go ahead and close this for now. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is start pulling off all the sides here. The top one just pops right off, and then the two below that have a Phillips head screw holding those on, and then they pop right off. Also behind this cover is gonna be our main circuit breaker, so we can disconnect that or shut that off right now. So we're gonna turn out this little thumb screw pull down on the little tiny tab to open it up, and then we can just shut that off. And these just pull out like that. I'm also gonna pull off the other side because we'll need those off so we can get to the dip switches so we can reassign the addresses for these two batteries since we're gonna be adding another battery on top. That one's gonna technically be number one. So it's gonna be one, two, and three. Also, each battery has its own circuit breaker and we're gonna shut those off for safety as well. And those are pretty much the same. You do the little thumb screw and you pop the door open and turn it off. And on the other side is the BMS on and off switch. Here's the BMS on and off switch. We're gonna go ahead and turn those off as well. And we'll also be pulling off those tabs so we can reset the address on these two batteries as well. It's always a good idea to check voltages to make sure everything is disconnected and zero before we start disconnect everything. So I'm gonna check the battery cables before we disconnect those. Those should be at zero volts, which they are. I'm also gonna check the AC, which we should be down to zero. All right, so the next thing we'll do is disconnect the battery cables and the communication cable right here, which we can just do that real quick. All right, now that we got the battery cables loosened up so we can pull those out, the next thing I need to do is disconnect the battery cables from the controller box right here. But in order for me to do that, I need to pull out all my flexible conduit and stuff right here. So give me just a second so I can get that out. That wasn't too bad. All right, over here on the left side of the controller box, what we need to do next is disconnect this BMS data cable that goes down to this first battery. So we're just going to back that out. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is disconnect these Amphenol connectors right here. These top two are the ones that go down to the bottom battery. The next two, obviously we can disconnect those because we are going to be removing the controller box next. And in order to get that off, we're gonna be removing these two screws, which hold it down basically on both sides. And then we can just lift this right off. All right, so since we're right here, we're just gonna go ahead and remove these two longer cables. And we can just pull those right through the brackets here. And we'll install the longer ones in just a couple of minutes. We'll do that after we mount the battery and the controller box. All right, look at us moving right along. So if you don't have one of these lift tables, I would suggest a second person, unless you can manhandle it all by yourself. All righty, here we go. 
Okay, before we slide on the new battery, we have to remove this bottom screw right here because that is going to line up and mount to this bracket right here. Nice, cool. All right, the next thing that I need to do since I'm mounting into a cinder block wall, I need to remove this screw right here where the bracket is going to attach to, and I'm going to set it up against the wall so I can mark and drill some holes. If you're going into a wood or drywall, anything like that, you can go ahead and do all of that with the battery mounted right here. But for me, since I'm going into cinder block and stuff like that, it's easier if the battery is out of the way. I need to do the same on this side, and this side is a little tight. That was nice, easy, and quick. Now we can bring the battery back and reinstall it. The next thing we can do is install our brackets and then mount the batteries together and then finally mount the controller box on top. And one of my holes drifted just a little bit, so I just had to widen the hole on the bracket just a little bit, but it'll be all right. And also as a quick reminder, you don't have to use Tapcons like I'm using right here. It does come with its own hardware. All right, well, we're just gonna go ahead and get these brackets installed. Alrighty, once your bracket is installed, you can reinstall that screw right here. And of course we will do that for both sides. All right, now that we have the upper bracket secured to the wall and the battery secured, don't forget you also have this screw right down here that mounts the battery to this bracket. Remember before we had the controller box mounted here, but now we have the battery. And don't forget the one on this side as well. All right, now we can reinstall the controller box up on top. Just have the two screws to hold that up. So I have no idea what I did with mine. It's one of them. I lost my screws. All right, next thing we're gonna do is parallel all the batteries together and then finally the controller box all the way down to the very bottom battery. These two are already here, so we're just gonna go ahead and push those on until they pop. I really like these quick disconnects. And now we're gonna connect this battery to the controller box. Next thing is gonna be from the controller unit right up here all the way down to the bottom battery. So we're gonna need the longer paralleling cables and we're going to fish those in between each of the handles of each battery. All right, next thing we're gonna do is remove the little cover plates that cover up the dip switches so we can assign each battery a location or address so it can communicate with the controller box up here and the controller box can communicate with the inverter. And if you go into the Ethos battery manual, at least on my manual, it is page 15, it tells you how to set each ID for each battery. And typically the battery that's closest to the controller box is gonna be battery number one. So this is gonna be battery one, two, and three. All right, so that's our controller box right up there. So if we go over here to the first battery and the dip switches right here, you can see the first three are down and the fourth one is up. If we go down to battery two, you can see the first two are down, third one is up, fourth one is down. And then finally down here for battery, battery three, First two are down and the last two are up. All right, so the next thing we can do is finish our communication wires on the left side of the battery. So previously, this battery right here was battery number one and this actually went up to the controller box. So we're gonna now put it into COM port two of battery one. All right, and that is super easy. So just plug it in and then tighten down the watertight seal and that's it, okay? And then we're gonna take our last communication cable right here. All right, we're gonna take that short cable and plug it into battery one and COM port one. So we'll push that down, lock it in place, and then tighten down the watertight seal. And then the other end's gonna go right up here to the controller box where it says battery. And it's gonna be the exact same thing. Plug it in and then tighten down the waterproof seal. All right, and then now what we can do is we can go over to each battery and start turning those on. So battery one is on, turn battery two on, and then battery three. Turn that one on. 
All right, and then we're gonna go to the other side and flip on each one of the breakers. And then the last breaker is gonna be up here on the controller box. And then once that's done, we can go over here to the screen and we should see 300 amp hours, which we do right there. And that's exactly what we have. We have 300 amp hour or 15 kilowatt hour worth of battery storage. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close these circuit breaker covers and tighten down those thumb screws over here on each one of the batteries. However, we are gonna shut off the controller unit because we still have to connect the battery cables from this side over to the inverter, which we're gonna do next. All right, so how I had it set up before was I cut some holes in one of these side covers right here for some flexible conduit. I went through two pieces and then I went over to this elbow right over here and that went over to the bottom side of the inverter. I'm gonna do roughly the same thing. However, I rotated that elbow up. So now whenever I put on this side cover, I can do a nice bend down into the elbow right there. So what I need to do next is remove the shorter pieces of conduit here and just put some longer lengths in there and make a nice curve. Boom, there we go. Got my extended flexible conduit remounted into the side cover and into the elbow cover right over here. Next thing we need to do is insert our battery cables through the flexible conduit along with the communication cable, get that routed through there and then through the piece of conduit right over here and then up into the inverter. Okay, we're gonna start routing our cables. So first one I have to do is the communication cables down the hatch. Go ahead and put the wires through here. All right, this is gonna be a little tricky for me, but for you, all you need to do is push on the positive and the negative, and then finally insert your communication right over here to go over to the inverter. Not sure how I'm gonna do this quite yet, and just kinda of making it up as I go. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see, you're not gonna be able to see anything. My black cable that's kinda of holding me up. All right, I think I got it. I got it. Alrighty, I got it. I just had one wire that was stuck off to the side. All right, now on to the inverter side. All right, first one we're gonna do the communication since it's nice and easy. And then the positives and negatives. I went ahead and made these wires a little bit shorter. Next thing we can do is wire them back up to the inverter. Positive over here and negative over here. I am gonna reinstall these ferrules. Furls, however you pronounce it. All right, got my furls back on there and we can reinstall the cables. Battery positive right here. And then battery negative. All right, last wire is our battery communication. And that's gonna go right up here. Boom. Done. Alrighty, we're at the point where we can start powering everything on. So the first circuit breaker is gonna be right here on the controller unit. Here we go. Go ahead and close that up and tighten down that little thumb screw. And as normal, it's always good to check the battery voltage before we actually flip the breaker right up here. So we'll go ahead and check that real quick. And I don't know if you can see it, but we're reading 52.6 volts. All right, so here we go. Boom, inverter's gonna turn on. All right, I'm gonna go over there and flip the main breaker. All right, we have our grid power, 246 volts. Next thing I'm gonna do is turn our solar back on. And then the last thing in here is turning on the load breaker. Close it up. All right, that's pretty much it. Last thing we have is all the side covers. And again, those are super easy. You're just gonna set them in place and then slide them back. Boom, and done. It's almost as tall as me. Alrighty, there we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, going from 10 kilowatt hour up to 15 kilowatt hour, all in less than an hour. Took me a little bit longer because, you know, video recording and stuff like that, but it should go pretty quick. So now I'm thinking with the 15 kilowatt hour battery, I should be able to make it all the way through the night and into the next day. 
and not go back onto the grid. Fingers crossed. Now there is one thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video is whenever you get your third battery or however many batteries you're, you're adding on to your system, they show up around 50 to 60% state of charge. So whenever you wanna connect these up, just make sure your existing system is around the same percent state of charge, somewhere around 50 to 60% and you'll be good to go. All right, well, I think that's pretty much all I got. If anybody else is looking to expand their existing Ethos battery system, don't worry, you can pretty much do it at any time because it's obviously a stackable and modular system. You know, you can do it at any time. And of course, if you do want to do that, Big Battery gave me a 10% off discount code that I can pass on to you guys so you can save some cash and that is Geo 10. It's definitely not required, but it's always appreciated because I do get a small kickback for that, which helps me create these awesome videos. And one more thing before I go, the fans are actually kicking on now because I think we're getting some good solar. 6,110 watts coming in. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention real quick is if you missed, and it's coming back down to 965 watts. Anyway, what I was gonna say is the first video was the installation of the inverter and the batteries, and then the second one was basically testing everything out. And if you missed those, I'll have those linked down below. All right, that's pretty much all I got. If anybody thought this video was helpful in any way, don't forget to like that smash button on your way out, and I will see you on the next. Since I'm going into a brick or a cinder brick, cinder block. Well, hey buddy, what you doing? Just sleeping? Some chips are good, aren't they? Oh, you're just licking the cheddar off. Okay. There you go. Oh. Now you got it. Want the whole thing? Dropped it. Get right there. Good job. Got a little piece left right there. Good job. Good job, Beyonce. Nice. Good job. Good girl. You're so beautiful, aren't you? Beautiful. Thank you.